greetings from the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America and the Canadian Orthodox Broadcasting System. We're not recording at the monastery, obviously, but we're at the uh, village of Harrison Hot Springs with Harrison Lake in the back. And perhaps uh, appropriate to have a large body of water because today we're going to switch back to the Old Testament is about you. And we're going to be talking about the book of Jonah. And not in some fine detail, but I want to show, or at least discuss, how the story of Jonah is really a story about us. You remember that Jonah was a prophet of God, and God called him to a special task. Now we often say, Akobogda, or God's will, uh, whatever God wills, or I want what God wills. And often we do want what God wills, so long as it doesn't contradict what we want. And this is the story of Jonah, and perhaps also a story of, of all of us. Uh, oh. And uh, so consequently, uh, we want to uh, think a little bit about what unfolds in this story. Remember that Jonah was told by God to go to the city of Nineveh and preach repentance to, to the great city of Nineveh. Now the Ninevites were the most hated people on the face of the earth, at least everybody who knew them despised them. They were very cruel and savage when they conquered other countries. And uh, when Nineveh finally fell, one of the chroniclers says the whole world heaved a sigh of relief. Now Jonah didn't, did not want to go to the Ninevites for a couple of reasons. He may have been afraid of them for one thing, and not really wanted to uh, go and start telling them that they had been wrong and perhaps be you know, stoned to death or tortured to death, not trusting God enough, <clears throat> although he was God's prophet. The other thing was that uh, he despised them like everyone else, and he perhaps didn't think the Ninevites were even redeemable. Uh, like um, so many uh, Augustinians, he perhaps thought that they were totally depraved. and. So in order to avoid fulfilling God's will, but rather to pursue his own will, he took shipping and it says he sailed, wanted to sail to Tarshish. Well, we're not sure where Tarshish was, but uh, later on Spain was referred to as Tarshish. In any case, uh, as a ship sets sail, <clears throat> it runs into a great storm. And uh, everyone wants to throw the tackling overboard. <clears throat> and uh, you're thinking, well, perhaps somebody uh, you know, committed a great sin or something, and, and we're being punished for this. So Noah comes on board and says, look, I, I know what this is all about. It's about me. Uh, I sinned against God. I disobeyed him. And that's why the storm has struck us. Well, we noticed, actually, the people did not want to throw him overboard. Uh, there was a sense of morality about it. And Jonah finally says, well, look, I've got to go overboard or else you'll all perish. So overboard he goes, and God sends a great fish or a whale to swallow him up. And um, after three days, Jonah's vomited out by the whale. And by this time, he's come to his senses a little and thinks, well, I better do what God wants rather than what I want. It, so quite begrudgingly, he goes off to Nineveh to preach repentance. Now, historically, we know that Nineveh never repented in sackcloth and ashes and never changed its ways and they never accepted the God of Abraham. But in any case, the story is really uh, about us, and that's what we want to focus on. Begrudgingly, Jonah fulfills God's will. And in the end, what God had desired comes to pass. But Jonah is not still not quite satisfied, because perhaps he doesn't really want the Ninevites to repent and be saved. Uh, perhaps he wants them to suffer or be punished because he dislikes them and they're those people and not us and they're so therefore they're wicked. And uh, so Jonah is outside the city and he takes shelter under um, a bush and God causes a canker worm to come out and devour the bush. And uh, Jonah said, well, but the bush was all I had to keep the sun off of me. And Anyway, God restores the uh, little arbor that he's sitting under and again shows his mercy and his compassion and his concern. But what he's trying to do is to open Jonah's heart to other people, 
to say that the, the, the covenant, the Word of God, is not just for a few people, but it's for anyone who will accept, hear and accept it and take it to themselves. And the heavenly kingdom is not for one particular nationality, but for all those who believe and strive for a, an appropriate life in this world. But so often we also will say, well, yes, I'll do whatever God wills, and I'm waiting to find out what God wills. And what we're actually doing is thinking about how to get our own way and thinking over what we want the most. And in the end, we'll decide that what it is we want the most is God's will. So uh, this is a very cheap cop-out sometimes to say, Volya Bogar, God's will. Uh, it tries to take, uh, keep us from having to take our own decisions about something, but also gives us an excuse to mull over ways to get our own way in the end. And this is what happens with Jonah. To open himself up and to have Israel open itself up to others and to bring them into God's covenant, to bring them into a saving relationship with God. This is what the story is ultimately about. And so we ourselves have to always watch that we're not superseding what God's commanded us or the life of the faith or the life of the church. God's will is expressed in the divine services and God's will is expressed in the rhythm of church life. And we often want to circumvent that some way and yet claim that we're looking at God's will. Uh, we always find ways to perhaps not fulfill our obligations or responsibilities and also to close our hearts and our minds to other people, even those people who are generally hated or despised, whom it's quite clear God does love and wishes to show mercy toward. Uh, so this story is really about us. And I think if you'll think about it a while and contemplate it with sincere prayer, you'll, you'll delve deeper and deeper into the way in which the story is about you personally, as well as each one of us. Thank you and God bless you.